I'm here in Lausanne to find out more about perovskite, a light, sensitive crystal, an incredibly exciting new material that could revolutionize solar power. In just a few years, its power conversion efficiency figures are nearly on a par with traditional silicon at 22%, and it's a thousand times thinner. All of this could mean in the future, the price we pay for solar power could fall considerably. These third-generation solar cells are built up layer by layer, like a sandwich with perovskite as the light harvesting active layer. Semi-transparent and flexible, perovskite could one day be used instead of glass windows in buildings. Experiments on the solar cells are taking place at the École Polytechnique Fédérale Lausanne as part of the EU's Got Solar project. What's surprising about perovskites is that they're made from a solution with simple procedures and from materials which are readily available, and we're seeing performance results which today are already ahead of silicone polycrystals. The caveat is the lead, of course. We must be careful we manage this weakness properly. But otherwise, it really is an extraordinary material that will forge its own path. To get around the lead problem, scientists coat the solar cells in protective glass. The final layer of the solar cell is gold, which acts as one of the two electrodes. One aspect the project is exploring is so-called tandem technology, using silicon and perovskite. The most interesting thing is the fact that we can combine this technology with the one that used silicon in order to obtain cells whose efficiency can reach 30%. It's here in Eindhoven the researchers are working on scaling up the perovskite solar cells. The challenge is to replicate the results of the laboratory on a larger scale, an important step along the road to commercialising perovskite solar cells. This device can produce up to 18 volts and 2 watts. We were able to reach the goals of this project, but we would like to go beyond that. But some aspects of this technology are still being developed, some of which are fundamental to it, such as stability. Dr. Olivier Bellon of project partner Great Cell Solar is working on stress tests for the solar panels in the Salience Research Centre, seeing how they survive in extreme temperatures and under prolonged light, conditions which simulate real weather. When do you imagine perovskite could be on the market as a commercial product? If uh, the recent results in stability and developments in the technology are anything to go by, I could easily imagine wearable technology or uh, consumer electronics being the first uh, products to use perovskite within a very short period of time. But for any more significant applications, such as the building products or the automotive industry, the timescales are likely to be a little bit longer. Dr. Bellon reckons their first perovskite-based products could see the light of day as early as 2019.